Welcome everyone to our live stream of our showcase. to our live stream of our um, we are really excited to have all of you here. We appreciate all of your patience. Um, I am going to speak literally for like 30 seconds and well, it's gonna be like a minute and get out of the way for these lovely participants to share. So bear with me as I share my screen for this portion and then my screen will not be shared and we're gonna hop right into it. So as a reminder, you are currently at the showcase for our fall 2022 course, Teaching and Learning as Primitive Hypertext, uh, taught by myself and Meghna. And we have been spending the last several weeks uh, speaking with each other about notions of teaching and learning and thinking about primitive hypertext in the spirit of Octavia Estelle Butler, who coined this term to sort of think about her relationship to many sprawling ideas simultaneously and the ways that she is borrowing from this language of computers and networks to talk about a primitive hypertext in the sense of something that is analog in her home that she gets to touch as she moves from book to book, text to text, idea to idea, audio to audio. As part of our showcase, uh, you'll see this image here, which has um, some raindrops that are on a window. Um, and part of this has a lot to do with part of many of our conversations uh, seeming to organize themselves around climate and weather and notions of precipitation and evaporation. Uh, precipitation um, in terms of what is coming down, evaporation in terms of what is going up, and what does it mean for us to be agile to allow for things to leave and come back? And you'll be hearing a lot about that tonight as folks are sharing. One thing that we wanna share in terms of form um, comes from something that uh, poet Sean D. Henry Smith has shared, um, poet, artist, amazing human being in general. Uh, there's a tweet from March 23rd, 2022, where they're talking about how they organize their poetry sets. And it reads, would love to talk to other poets about how they put together their sets. I usually practice a set of things, stay sensitive to the week or day, and the poems read typically invite or disinvite themselves to and from the moment. Intuitive, never random. Maybe for this one, I will take requests though. And so thinking about the flow for this evening as an opportunity not to just sort of do things as planned, but thinking about our sort of uh, devotion and commitment to allow intuition to guide our processes. Uh, so as you'll listen today, you'll hear people invite and disinvite uh, dis different elements of what they had prepared. Um, and we'll have an opportunity to see how those things are woven together over time. Finally, before we begin, um, as some just background notes, uh, folks will be sharing their notes literally from this class. Um, process notes, images, sounds, um, excerpts of things they heard other folks say, excerpts of things that they have read. And we're thinking about citation in this class, not as something that we do because we believe in ownership of ideas, but citation as a form of storytelling and lineage. And so at the end of this evening, uh, folks who are interested can get a more robust um, and complete uh, bibliographical citation of um, where things are coming from. But in the flow of this evening, you'll hear people echoing someone else, mentioning someone else, you'll hear a name dropped here and there. Uh, and for folks who are interested in engaging in their full uh, sort of personal journey with hypertext, that information will be shared. And just as a quick note, again, on citation, um, thinking about this notion that Ross Gay talks about of being bound in gratitude to the folks who have supported and lent ideas and have nurtured their work. Alexis Pauling Gums, who asks for us to think about writing and thinking and being in the world as less of an individual act, um, but as one of, of integrated and ancestry co-written text. Charles Olson, who reminds us to leave the roots on. Catherine McKittrick, who also reminds us to think about the people who have inspired the work, the people who have uh, lent support, who have given food, who have made a phone call, uh, that we are all here in this space to sort of think about to whom we are bound in gratitude, uh, to whom we are in collaboration, and again, in the spirit of Octavia Butler, and that conversation with Samuel Delaney on primitive hypertext, building out these networks of relationships between ideas and people and places and other possibilities. So you're going to hear a weaving, braiding, um, 
quoting of many words this evening. I'm going to take a step back, um, and these lovely participants are going to be sharing with you uh, several of the things that have been coming up for them. So we're going to begin, and I'm going to shift, close my screen and allow you all to take it away. We are forever entangled with our formative contexts and relationships, our first primitive hypertexts. Uh, speaking for Galen McDonald, mm. close reading to me is holding that word, sentence, paragraph close. You don't lose context. You understand deeply, and if you don't care deeply enough to understand, so you reread and reread until you do, is close reading love. A quote from Elizabeth Perez. She was never laid to rest. In a quote tweet of the New School on Twitter, the quote tweet reads, but as we enter the fourth week of disruptions, we must use our resources carefully to ensure that our students' academic needs are met. Jonathan Senshine at J. Sench responds, there's always in these messages, the idea that nothing educational happens during a strike, that solidarity is not learning, that refusing to compromise on dignity and justice is not educational, that being confronted with the decision of whether to cross the picket doesn't teach. Um, Le Guin via James, if you evade suffering, you also evade the chance of joy, the pleasure you may get or pleasures, but you will not be fulfilled. You will not know what it is to come home. 2020, I told my friends that I needed some space. That night I had a dream I was being carried across the lake by some evil force that told me only the power of love can save you. I thought about my friends and I woke up. I have always been so delicate with things I love. I worry that being open will mean a pathway to breaking, but people are people and not glasses. Being voluptuously present and letting the erotic be our compass and barometer in pleasure and in the life proving relational practice of every day. We're all here just to hang out anyways. What if the reader of the poem could track where their eyes lingered? I've been thinking a lot about things I learned as a child that almost operate beyond my conscious or deliberate knowledge. There are many things I want to unlearn. Sometimes you learn things that you don't want to. Here, but also somewhere else, further in time. Allow these words to wash over you. Release the pressure to capture them and stow them away. Instead, allow yourself to be a sieve. Give attention to what bubbles up, those errant turbidities that collect in patches. These are the beginnings for new ground. The density of the connection between us and formative hypertexts does not mean we are engaging in relationship with them. Dogma needs a chaperone. I also wonder about the role of speculative fiction in relation to teaching, learning, and fear. Like we are teaching and learning about fictional crisis in this class right now in a time of crisis. And to me, it feels a little more accessible because of the form, a close reading of a fictional text from Lee in class. Sharing all of ourselves without knowing all of ourselves. True love. At my friend's art school, they aren't allowed to choose their classes directly, but instead write proposals to professors whose classes they're interested in. 
Then the professors come together to choose who they want in their class. We talked about what it means to have faith your community will sometimes know what you need more than you do. Uh, this is via Ofemi of Taiwo um, via Twitter. One thing I'm trying to get better about from here on out is writing and thinking even less defensively. Trying to craft sentences into fortresses is a waste of valuable time and effort. What would you say if you were speaking to someone who's trying to understand? Say that. The way memory changes over time is proof that reality is we do not remember. We rewrite, re re rewrite memory as much as history is rewritten. They say that shit is hard and which shit is being okay with not knowing. Step number eight, preserve and sustain whatever delusions you found necessary to behave in good faith. Intuition as a form of knowledge. We look at the world once in childhood, the rest is memory. Tight connections between learnings over quantity of sources. What we do first and what we do frequently. I've invented a new political stance. It's like a never Trumper, but a never Swifty. Think of a person you admire whose practice is very different from your own. Today, answer questions as they might answer them. Alexis Shotwell via Lenning Wang. Being against purity means that there is no primordial state we can recover, no Eden we have desecrated, no pretoxic body we might uncover through enough chia seeds and kombucha. Via Camila, there's a deep, deep power in asking questions when there's nothing to even grasp for. Finally, in the coherence we weep. We might weep because there's something that has passed into being perceived as fully known. Maybe coherence is the illusion of being seen and understood in a certain context and also the strange transformation of the coherented being. A refusal to be contained. Where do you place yourself at the periphery or at the court vortex? To love the other, we believe, is the most intimate way to recognize the other, to get to know and understand who they really are. But this is what power is about as well, when it manifests itself in structures of domination. Consequently, radical love would be a love that goes beyond recognition. That is, a love in which the lovers would renounce their desire to fully grasp the identity of the other, and no longer insist on understanding who the other is. It can take millions of years for a single layer of rock to form. The ultimate touchstone is witness, the privilege. It strives for the tense of possibility that grammarians refer to as the future real conditional or that which will have had to happen. The grammar of black feminist futurity is a performance of a future that hasn't yet happened, but must. Tina Camps, listening to images. From Craft in the Real World by Matthew Celesis. 
What my peers and I consistently valued from our instructor's ability was to see our stories as we meant them. Margot was remarkably good at this. For a long time, I wondered both how she saw our intentions so well, especially when many of our backgrounds were so different from hers. This is not a criticism, it is an attempt to put what Margot taught me into practice for myself. After my first two years of teaching, I spent part of a writing conference asking how other authors run their workshops. Eventually the author, Nami Moon, explained to me that she leads each workshop differently since each story is different. To hear it put so plainly stunned me. Mm. Via uh, Maria Inigo Clavo, to know also involves a certain ownership of things, nature and other humans, the Western fantasy for control. In this analogy, extracting secrets is an important part of maintaining power. Stand still. The trees ahead and the bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is called here, and you must treat it like a powerful stranger. Poem by David Wagner. Intention, to want to have less, to want to keep less, to eliminate the want to have, to eliminate the want to keep, to trust that things, things just stay. I'm leaning into failure. I'm wandering about for promises of monsters. I'm wandering about how brokenness can redeem us from the incarceration of wholeness. Show loose process, show notes. The world is full of painful stories. Sometimes it seems as though there aren't any other kind. And yet I found myself thinking how beautiful that glint of water was through the Changing form, unlearning and learning as weathering. Just to have accompanied them for however brief a span on a journey impossible to accomplish alone. The atmosphere of myth and magic frightens me and so takes on an undoubted reality. Number 15. Conduct yourself in such a way that your students can eventually forget that you exist. And Boyer, Rules for Teachers. The rejection of closure. We will come in and out of the process of closure, in and out of healing. Sometimes I hate that my fellow queers were given therapy language. Sometimes I hate hearing the word healing. Sometimes I hate people saying, don't reach out, they'll say no. Sometimes I feel defeated when I feel sad about a situation. Sometimes I go back and I shouldn't have. The thing about living alone is that only you are the one who recognizes when things are going sideways in your head. Hard to look away from the intimacy of living with your body and needing to care for it. You catch the shadow of yourself in the candlelight and think maybe I can still be beautiful. You think I wish other people could see you think, I wish I would let other people see. The thing about living alone is you're only tangible when you want to be. Study is what you do with other people, talking and walking around with other people, working, dancing, suffering, some irreducible convergence of all three held under this name of speculative practice. I think it's a quote from Fred Moulton. I'm going to try to bring one from the top of my head from June Jordan, I think, about reclaiming the home as a sanctuary away from work, meaning they invite friends over for tea uh, and don't use that space for work. This is um, an improper quotation.
This class has made me reflect a lot about how learning operates within my for-profit workplace. Learning at work is sometimes safe and sometimes a virtue, but only if the knowledge I attain is legible to others and can be repurposed for productivity and profit. Learning is something that happens from a place of lack. What rushes in when things are not led? Learning as a skill of care. What if school was the skill at which we should care for each other and move together? In my view, at this point in history, this is really what we need to learn most urgently. How can I conduct myself in such a way that my students can eventually forget that I exist? Unlearning and learning is meant to be a relational practice, not an individual obligation. Quantum Listening by Pauline Oliveros, last class designed by these collaborative moments of sprawl, moments to be these aristocratic by Roland Bart, readers again, not to devour, to gobble, but to graze, to browse scrupulously to stick with itness, to take your time to read, reread, misread, be misread, engage with leisurely. Surrender, we know so much, but know so little. This is a dynamic list and may never be able to satisfy particular standards for complete list, completeness. I don't think things can ever be finished. To what extent is longevity a part of a tradition of, I have a right to exist versus, I'm just going to keep it going regardless. And um, then I, I wrote out a meme. Um, first level, finishing projects. Second level, abandoning projects. Third level, starting a new project before finishing the last project. Fourth level, continuously coming up with new ideas without doing anything. What if we never finish our books? We are always leaving something unfinished. Make your goal to be obsolete. My idea of teaching is tied to a performance of knowledge and competence. Can I sabotage myself? Might I help others sabotage themselves? You should not be well adjusted. I let them take hold. How do we know when to let things die? Creative maladjustment as building a future that makes sense. What is important about naming is practice and importance. Ask before you bite. Teaching and learning as mutual recognition. And despite it all, I somehow find myself still in search of the miraculous. We're looking into the abyss together, looking clear eyed and being afraid, but the fear isn't debilitating. Via James, I think asking questions in class and letting them linger feels restorative like the rest of life can often demand answers, but it feels good to not force a response and to experience the joy and wonder that rests with not knowing, since often not knowing an answer is received as incompetence.
why do I have to keep refreshing myself? What doesn't stick? What do I practice and engage with enough for it to? From Emily, Emily Dickinson's letters in Diamante. When I try to organize, my little force explodes and leaves me bare and charred. I think you called me wayward. Every one of my books reaches and remains for two and more months at the top of the bestseller lists of Publishers Weekly, The Washington Post, The New York Times, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So be it, see to it. Did I learn at a young age to only ask questions that could be answered? Maybe coherence is the illusion of being understood. I love you, but I'm not that shape anymore, said the cloud. So I see myself form like a cloud. We've accomplished nothing together. The absence of something in the presence of nothing. At this point, I'm more interested in how the work posits and does or does not answer that question. I would like the work to be non-work. That means that it would find its way beyond my preconceptions. What I want of my art, I can eventually find. The work must go beyond this. It is my main concern to go beyond what I know and what I can know. The formal principles are understandable and understood. It's the unknown quantity from which and where I want to go. As a thing and object, it accedes to its non-logical self. It is something, it is nothing, Eva Hess. I've been following the light a lot. I feel like that's been a great teacher via Amina from class. There is no closure. Interdisciplinarity consists in creating a new object that belongs to no one. Reminds me of being illegible when working in an interdisciplinary way. This is the drawing I need. Text is a living thing, always a draft, open to revision. This is my notes I took for the class, seeds, trees, shadows. I find poetry a way of experimenting with how we can think, speak, write of the non-human without losing sight of how inescapably human we are. For example, the live culture of some fermenting processes is often referred to as the mother, which may etymologically come from the Middle Dutch for dregs. This opens up a different kind of familial scene, a way of thinking through those relations as metabolic, what can and cannot be digested by certain members what is the necessary waste produced by being in relation? The loss of learnings we forget as erosion, shaped by them nonetheless. Now, and what's my name now? And what's my name now? And now. Let me then create you. You've done as much for me. You lie on this hot bank in this lovely, in this fading, this still bright October day, watching boat after boat float through fine combed out twigs of the willow tree. And you wish to be a poet and you wish to be a lover, but the splendid clarity of your intellect brings you to a halt. This is my copy of Liz's drawings from their primitive hypertext in week two.
11. A Socratic bully is still a bully. Anne Boyer, Rules for Teachers. Waywardness is our tool and errantry is the middle path. You asked us what ideas were most affirming and which were most alienating. And actually the same idea for me might be the most affirming and the most alienating at the same time because waywardness is compelling. But the question popped into my head as to whether embracing waywardness might lead to losing things we have now or provoking the resistance of others or spaces becoming more difficult to live in. We tend to assume that when we look at a photograph or a monument, we want it to mean something, but I'm not so sure. I think often that what we feel is that yearning towards being and meaning in which our subject is perpetually caught. We want to know the aliveness of the space between the learnable and the unknowable. We are brought into sympathy with that experience because it is also ours. Can I live in your shadow and be speckled, flickering? Each of us will have to bury our own dead. We knew them. We can find the words, any words, memories, quotations, thoughts, songs. I have acorns enough for each of us to plant live oak trees to our dead. Citation as a love letter. Sometimes everything that you learn, you will not remember but it may precipitate when the time is right. When she passed by me, I made the sign of the cross. I'm not entirely sure why. This is a copy of a drawing by Camila showing orbital velocity and escape velocity. Also via Camila, not to feel deeply as an instrument for someone else, but feel deeply because it's the only way we get out of this shit. For the erotic is not only a question of what we do, it is a question of how acutely we and fully we can feel in the doing. Quote by Audre Lorde. How can I expect people whose discipline is their identity to accept this hybrid model when what they slash we are being faced with is the total removal of their discipline as autonomous fields of inquiry? But then think of the dazzling creativity of the alternative challenge that would be opened up. Legible, but not completely, seen through a self focus. Language so sacred, it's not my place to try to decipher it. Phonemes as holy as stones on a string, mysterious as the names we give to animals or words we only know in prayer. Thank you so, so so much yes the hands let's do it this was absolutely beautiful um it was a good thing that my camera is off because it was making all kinds of faces um <laughs> and being very excited and we'll cry afterwards i want to um read something that i wrote as folks were speaking and share one final slide for our class uh yeah um as everyone was speaking i wrote I do not want to manifest a grasp, but dogma makes me weep in a vortex of my own making. I want to own my shit, but nothing else. I will own my shit, but nothing else. And I want to say thank you again. This is, I'm like, I'm like, I'm probably going to cry. So I'm going to try very hard. I, I want to say thank you for 
um, being just like generally just good people. It feels like a good thing to thank people for, but I think that we <laughs> we don't say thank you enough for just being good human beings beyond accolades, beyond contributions, beyond what you have given someone um, just being a good human in the world. Um, and the last slide that I'll share um, before we head out um, is a slide that um, I shared um, at Lily's um, lecture at the School of Commons. Um, and there's a longer story about how Lily and I have been in one another's orbit, <laughs> which I'll share at another time, uh, but I'll share this slide here. Um, I was on Twitter a few days ago and uh, someone had posted, uh, someone had followed requests to follow me and then I followed them back because I was like, oh, I like their feed. Um, and his name is Zach and they shared this excerpt from Clee Suspector's Agua Viva. Um, and it's a book that I can't get past the first 15 pages of because <laughs> I get stuck in her prose in a really beautiful way when I can't get out. And um, so this isn't a part that I haven't been able to get to yet, but now I have a reason to get there. Uh, and it reads, I want to write to you like someone learning. I want to write to you like someone learning. Um, and so I wrote in response, I want to love you like someone learning. I want to dance with you like someone learning. I want to breathe with you like someone learning. I want to fuck you like someone learning. I want to argue with you like someone learning. I want to leave you like someone learning. And so I want to say thank you uh, for letting this class be led by someone learning. Um, and that we, I hope that we can all write um, and be in the world as someone learning um, and not as someone learned. Um, and that's sort of my hope uh, and wish as we exit this class. Um, I think there was a request for us to do a portrait. Is that what we're doing? Um, yeah, let's do it. And I'm gonna check and see if there are any uh, folks in the Twitch who are saying anything. Um, and I think we're good. One moment here. Uh, we have people saying just, I mean, I think we're all kind of like in a state of undoneness. Um, so it, maybe we can leave this off on Ashton Crawley and thinking about sustaining undoneness um, as he talks about in Black Pentecostal Breath, this notion of tearing with ideas, staying undone, being untidy uh, in the ways uh, that we engage, untidy, not messy, untidy, and that we are free. Um, so yeah, how should we do this portrait? Netta, let us know. I'm going to count down to three and I'm going to take a screenshot on my computer. So okay. get yourselves pretty, sit <laughs> nice, you know, just pose, work it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to count us down. Three, two, one. That was so anticlimactic because you couldn't hear it, but I got it. <laughs> I was going to say, are we done? Do we do it? All right. did it. We're Thanks. done. We did it. We're done. Let's wave bye to Woo! everyone on Twitch. Thank you, everyone who decided to spend a Friday night with us, because I think this is probably the dopest thing you could have done on a Friday night, clearly. Uh, bye, everyone.